Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. I hope you're having an amazing day. As we get ever closer to the RTX 50 series of graphics cards launching, I have to say that the uplift we're looking at generation over generation looks very impressive indeed. Now, while I suspect rasterization is going to get a pretty hefty uplift, Ray tracing and path tracing, from what I'm hearing, is going to be the main focus of Blackwell. And honestly, just given what NVIDIA have done historically over the past, well, couple of generations, I think we can all agree that there's going to certainly be a big focus on that, plus, of course, tensor core performance and so on and so on. It's going to be very interesting to see what improvements are made for DLSS as well. With that said, in this video, um, we're going to be talking about the full specifications of GB2 and other chips as we move down the stack and almost all of them are utilizing GDDR7 with only the lowest uh, skew apparently using GDDR6. We're going to get into all of that plus some more stuff including RDNA4 after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, just a quick reminder for those of you who have missed the past, let's say, week or so's news concerning Blackwell, and this is pretty important. So if you do know about the release date updates, you can skip forward about a minute. But if not, I do suggest you listen uh, because otherwise it will answer a few questions for later on in the video. But basically, the release date for RTX 5080 and 5090 was a essentially almost certainly going to be Q4, at least according to earlier rumors. But now there is a lot of questions of whether this has been delayed. And basically my own sources, plus lots of stuff online, WCCF Tech, and so on and so on, all hearing different things. So some are reporting that the original plan was indeed Q4, but others are reporting that now it has shifted to Q1 2025, again for the 5080 and the 5090. Honestly, it's not like it's a huge delay. It's not like we're seeing like a nine month uh, delay from NVIDIA. It's only, you know, three, four months or something like that at worst. So it's not a travesty, even if you have like an older card at the moment, you're waiting for an upgrade, you can probably wait a couple of extra months. If anything, maybe this is a good thing as well. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I don't think the 5080 is going to be cheap. You guys can uh, comment down below what you suspect the MSRP for the 5080 and 5090. And just for funds, this is the 5070 class cards will be. Um, I, I'm expecting at least a couple of hundred bucks on top of the previous generation, but maybe that's me being optimistic. With that said, now we're going to move on to the specifications. So we're going to be using um, Coppertite 7 Chemist specs here, but I'll also throw in a nice comparison from Tech Power Up and also uh, VideoCards.com plus some other bits and pieces. So let's begin with GB202. It is a 12 by 8 configuration. We'll go more into what this means in just a second, I promise you. 7 by 6 for GB203. Um, 205 is 5 by 5. 206 is 3 by 6 and finally 2 by 5 is GB207 and as you can see 512 bit for the full um for the full GB202 die the rumors are that we're going to see 448 for the uh, 5090 203 is uh, 256 bit 192 bit 128 bit those are all GDDR7 and again the lowest configuration which is apparently the 207 is using 128 bit GDDR6 and I have to say that both um, tech power up as well as videocars.com have done a pretty nice job of basically uh, putting all of that into more layman's terms and we can see that basically uh, for example if we pick on the gb202 chip here that's a 12 by 8 configuration so 12 of course is representative of the gpc count and the tpc count is 8 
Um, so, for example, if we look at the CUDA cores, we're looking at 24, 5, 7, 6 for, again, the 202. But I really want to stress, guys, this is for the full configuration. And, of course, the full configuration is not going to be found in, let's say, the 1590. We also have videocards.com who have also put this together in a nice configuration as well. And, uh, basically, it seems that, most likely... We're going to be seeing um, 192 SM, 84 SM, 50, 36, and 20 again as we go down the stack. So this is where the asterisks come in because there are still some questions exactly what the configuration of the GPC and other elements of the GPU are. There are some rumors that there will be uh, some changes, for example, to the number of ROPs versus that configuration. And it's still not 100%. I mean, it seems quite likely, but quite likely it's not confirmation of the number of SMs, again, per, you know, GPC or anything else for that matter. So at the moment, we're still dealing with some ballpark figures and there definitely could be some changes. There could be also differences in the number of CUDA cores, for example, per SM. So it's going to be interesting to see how it differs. We could look at the uh, data center cards to kind of give us some insight. But as you probably know, it isn't necessarily one to one. Um, obviously, there are big changes that we can point to, for example, the memory configuration. Um, but also just in terms of what nvidia choose to shave down and change well obviously there are going to be some differences it's going to be very interesting to see what the final configuration of these gpus are if we're looking at it at the number of sm we're looking at a 33 percent increase with the biggest die versus the biggest die of the predecessor but that again isn't necessarily indicative of performance because um i am hearing blackwell has much higher clock frequencies i've heard over three gigahertz but at this point, it's certainly not final silicon, so of course things can change. Further to that, I suspect that there are various improvements across the architecture. I've heard there's some really big changes across the caches and some other bits and pieces. So you can't exactly do a one-for-one -one comparison and just say, well, the number of SMs has increased. And even if you could do that, which again, you cannot, the other really big element, of course, in the room, the, you know, the, the flashing neon sign, is that we don't know how NVIDIA are going to segment the die. I have heard from a couple of people that the 5090 is going to be somewhere between, you know, around 150 to 160 SM at most. And this is, of course, going to leave room for the 5090 Ti, presumably. It's going to be very interesting to see whether that is the case and what the release timings are for that. Honestly, at this point, there is a very good chance that the specifications can change, particularly if we are looking at a Q1 release date. If you remember the previous generation, there were so many different leaks for the, um, was it just the 4090 or was it the 4080 as well? I'm pretty sure it might have been both, but especially the 4090 had so many different leaks. So it's going to be very interesting. We also, of course, dealt with a kind of leak of sorts in terms of performance from Micron, where they were talking about the performance of like what you can expect from cards using um, GDDR7. And that seemed to be a pretty good point of comparison based upon the number of SMs we're seeing here. However, again, it's going to be very interesting to see whether that's real world performance, especially once you've started to implement things like, well, driver updates. And it's, of course, going to be different from title to title anyway. I'm going to be very interested to see what actually happens with Blackwell, because ultimately, as I'm sure everyone knows at this point, it seems that there is not going to be any competition for Blackwell in terms of the highest end. RDNA 4, however, is going to be still pretty performant. And speaking of RDNA 4, um, we actually have a shipping manifest that was found by Ulrac 29. Um, there's not really a huge amount here to say, so I'm just going to keep this pretty brief, but it's basically... It's the first time that we've actually seen anything that's kind of, at least to my knowledge, um, we actually see an XTX version of RDNA 4, uh, you can see it says graphics card Navi 48, which is the highest end, G28201DT, which I'm assuming means desktop, XTX, and then there's a bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to read out because it's, you know, REVB pre-correlation A0 plats. So anyway, and my point is that uh, this is obviously a good sign. 
There have also been some updates concerning the drivers in Linux where they got a hefty update, I think it was a day or two ago. Uh, obviously, um, Linux is open source and obviously AMD's driver team are being pretty proactive in this, which is obviously a very good thing. The caveat, I think it's always a caveat, is it's not exactly clear when um, RDNA 4 is going to release. I'm really leaning towards next year as well, probably Q1. I could be wrong on that. That is not solid. It's certainly an interesting choice if it's uh, next year. On the other hand, I guess it will kind of depend on timing because if NVIDIA releases all of the high-end parts, let's say hypothetically, and this is a hypothetical, let's say that NVIDIA releases the 5080 and 5090 in Q1 and AMD releases their GPUs in Q1, there's usually like a gap of a couple of months at minimum before the mid-range cars come out from NVIDIA. Of course, that is a... Uh, there are exceptions, but generally speaking so maybe amd will have a couple of months on the market as always with this stuff software drivers a little thing known as pricing is all going to be part of this as well i will be very curious to see also what happens with intel uh, battle mage has been confirmed now by intel to still be coming out for the desktop not that it was really that much in doubt like we kind of knew it was um, but, you know, they've basically said that it's coming along, there are some big improvements, but we don't really have, like, Intel have been very cagey about Battle Mage, they've basically said that at the moment they're focused a lot on software, which is pretty much, like, uh, the same messaging they gave a couple of months back, uh, where they said essentially the engineering for the chip is done, it's just, you know, tweaks here or there, I'm assuming, that it's almost all software now. Um, and has been for a while. As far as I understand it, you know, based on comments from Intel themselves, it seems that all of the team now are working on um, Celestial, which of course is the generation after um, after Battle Mage, and then of course we have Druid. It's going to be interesting to see what we actually get from Intel in terms of the pricing. Um, one definite positive that we can say for both Intel as well as AMD for the x86 anyway is that of course it does give them a lot of flexibility with APUs and stuff um, but obviously NVIDIA seem to be having something to say about that as well so uh, <laughs> yeah I'll be I'll be curious to see just what AMD can do to make a dent in the um, GPU market because at the moment Nvidia are really just killing it in the in the um, RTX 40 sales. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.